Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca, and this is Monet. Welcome to our video. Today, we hope to help you out with some useful memorization techniques to understand transcription. Rebecca and I are both biology majors at the University of Texas at El Paso. I took the molecular cell biology course last semester. And I took it last year, and I loved it so much that I became a tutor. So we know exactly how difficult and confusing the details for this process can be. To try and help you all out, Rebecca and I have done our best to gather some of the tips and tricks that helped us ace MCB and many of our other biology courses. This video will be broken down into four basic parts. First, we will refresh your memory by touching on the basic components of transcription. Then, we will describe the different effects positive and negative regulation have on the overall process. Lastly, we'll share some tools to help you remember the main factors involved. Transcription is a highly specialized process of making a molecule of RNA from a DNA template. This molecule of RNA carries the information and tools necessary to build proteins and other components necessary for our body survival. We totally understand how impossible it may seem to memorize everything involved in this process, and we know how overwhelming this can be. But never fear, we have some tools to help. Let's get started. What is transcription regulation? Well, first, let's think of an orchestra that is led by a conductor. The conductor gives the orchestra different signals that guides the members to either go faster, slower, get louder, or softer. Similarly, during transcriptional regulation, different players will receive instructions that will affect the level of transcription. Now let's go into the details. There are two types of regulation, DNA-dependent and DNA-independent. Let's go by parts, as Jack the Ripper would say. DNA-dependent regulation involves sequences in the DNA that will either enhance or reduce the levels of transcription. These DNA sequences include cis-acting sequences, enhancers, and silencers. They are basically additional instructions that tell you how much of that particular gene you want to transcribe. Now, we know that transcription starts at a site in the DNA called the promoter. So from this point, we will refer to the regions before or after it as upstream or downstream. So what does that mean? Well, for that, let's map out a gene. We said transcription starts at the promoter. This is your point of reference. Now think about when in math, you would draw an x-axis and a y-axis. Anything on the left was negative. Anything on the right was positive. Same here. Your promoter is your origin. Anything before it or to the left is upstream. You could remember it as when going upstream or uphill, you have a negative attitude. And on the contrary, anything after the promoter or to the right means going downstream. You have a positive attitude. So back to the DNA sequences that can regulate the level of transcription. Cis acting sequences are found close to the promoter, like twin sisters. And they will promote an intermediate level of transcription by giving the promoter a little push since they are close, but that's it. Enhancers and silencers are different. They are both located far away from the promoter and can be either upstream or downstream. They are assisted by a protein that will bind to them, helping them fulfill their destiny. Enhancers, which are DNA regions, have an activator protein that binds to them. The activator, as the good wingman that it is, will then induce a loop in the DNA to bring the enhancer in contact with the rest of the transcription machinery. A kind of, can you feel the love tonight kind of situation, which results in optimal levels of transcription. So back to our orchestra. That would be the conductor instructing our players to get louder or go faster. Now silencers seek to do the opposite. A silencer is a DNA region, and the repressor is a protein that will bind to it. Two things can happen. Either it will play musical chairs and compete with the activator, or it will hold down the transcription machinery as a cowboy. Yeehaw! Now hold your horses there, lad! Which results in a decrease in the level of transcription. 
and this would be the conductor of the orchestra giving instructions to slow down, get softer, or bring the show to an end. Hmm, okay, let's see. Hey, where am I? Hmm, what am I doing here? What is, what is this? Hmm, who are these two people? <gasps> my goodness, they are my students. Hey, Rebecca, hey, Monette, is that you? Yeah, oh, hey, oh, no. I guess you guys were doing the video. Oh, sorry to interrupt. I better get out of here. I guess I shouldn't even be here to start with. So, all right. See ya. Bye. So that was it for DNA dependent. But now let's discuss DNA independent regulation. As the name indicates, this type of regulation does not depend on the DNA itself, but on the other proteins and molecules associated to it. So I know this is a video on memorization techniques, but where can I listen to more about this stuff, Monique? Well, Rebecca, you could totally check out our podcast, Episode 3, How Our DNA is Packaged in the Cell Nucleus. But for now, let's just recall, histones are proteins associated with the DNA and help package it. They have finger-like projections to which the molecules can be attached and that will either trigger the chromatin to condense or decondense. DNA independent regulation includes acetylation and methylation of histone proteins. Whenever you hear a word ending in elation, just know that it's the addition of whatever the prefix is indicating. For example, when you are getting dressed, the first thing you might put on would be your underwear. This would be underwear elation. Similarly, acetylation is the addition of an acetyl group to the histone tells. This is mediated by an enzyme called histone acetyltransferase, or HAT for short. When HATs go to work, they trigger chromatin decondensation, basically making chromatin more accessible and attractive so that transcription can take place. And remember, HATs, hats, hats make you attractive. attractive! On the other hand, methylation, which is the addition of a methyl group, may trigger either decondensation or condensation. If chromatin is condensed, it is too tight to be accessed and therefore inhibiting transcription. These effects will depend on what particular amino acid is being methylated. Let's take lysine for example, one of the common targets of methylation. The one letter code for lysine is K. When you are reading your book or do a quick Google search, you might stumble across these. So these are normally referred to as domains. Let's break down a couple of them. So this shows histone tree. Is being methylated tries at the position of a certain lysine. So for example, methylation of lysine 4, which is what we see here, will trigger the activation of chromatin decondensation, making it accessible. But it's a different case with methylation of lysine 9 or lysine 27. Now, imagine you're at the mall and you're having some sneaky thoughts. You want to steal something. You might be not motivated to do it if you see a K9 squad. Get it? K for lysine, 9 for the number. So if you see a K9 squad, you will be inactivated from committing the crime. Chromatin will be condensed and therefore inactivated if lysine 9 is methylated. Same thing would happen if you saw 3 K9 squads, so 9 times 3 is 27. If lysine 27 is methylated, you would also be deterred from committing a crime. You don't want 3 K9 squads chasing after you. So this is a way to remember that methylation of histones will depend. So, we discussed transcription regulation and ways to remember them and their effects. Now we have a helpful mnemonic to remember the factors involved in the overall process. The roles these factors play can be found in Movie 6, Transcriptional Initiation by RNA Polymerase 2. There's a large number of them and remembering their order can be confusing at first, but it will be easy if you remember that they do their best for polymerase to enhance huge phosphorylation. When you read about them, you will see them referred to as TF2 something. That something will be a specific letter. 
TF stands for transcription factors, 2 stands for polymerase 2, and the letters do their best for polymerase to enhance huge phosphorylation. This is the order in which they will appear in the process of transcription. However, in a nutshell, they help recognize and bind to the promoter, recruit polymerase and all of the elements involved to get the machinery ready and start the process of transcription. We really hope this was helpful. Yeah, hopefully these tips and tricks help you finish this class with less gray hair than we did. Wow, that was something. I guess I'm not really needed here. Or am I? Well, okay, this was really good. Uh, remember to subscribe to my channel on YouTube and watch all of our videos. There are a lot more, but this was the best. Or maybe not? I don't know. Okay, well, bye, bye. everybody.